right up and get your tickets for another moment in gaming history. Hi guys, welcome back to the channel, or if you're new here, welcome officially to the channel. This is a segment I call, obviously, Moments in Gaming History, where I talk about various different moments in history as they relate to video games. What I have for you today is the one of the earliest moments of an electromechanical game that I could find. Now, this is not to say a video game, because it doesn't really translate into the very common definition of an actual video game just yet. It is, however, a very early attempt at using computers to interact with humans to play a video game. So what we're going to do is we're going to go into the concept of this, the inception of how they designed it, and how it was received by the public. So hopefully you guys will hang out and enjoy this one. Thank you so much. Today we're going to talk about a device called a Nimitron. I know it sounds weird, and honestly, even the game it's meant to mimic is kind of weird, but the timeline and how it worked is very interesting. You see, the Nimitron was a device made to play the game called Nim. What the heck is Nim, you say? Yeah, I didn't know either. Uh, I'm going to try to make this game make sense, and yeah, if you're still a little confused after this, I understand. Nim is a mathematical strategy game. Hey, 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 stop running, stop running, it's going to be okay, I swear, we're going to get through this. Nim is a game in which two players take turns removing, or nimming as it's called, objects from distinct heaps or piles. On each turn, the player must remove at least one object and may in fact remove any number of objects from the same heap or pile. The object, depending on the variant you're playing, is to avoid taking the last object or to take the last object. I know it sounds weird, but it requires a lot of forethought and planning to make sure that you pick up just enough or just few enough objects to not be stuck either missing the opportunity to pick up the last item or having to. The idea behind the design of the Nimitron was the same principle as the regular game just done electronically. The game was designed to build by Gerald L. Tawney and William A. Dare. These two worked in a relay division of Westinghouse under the direction of Edward Condon who came up with the idea after talking to a couple of fellow employees about the game Nim. He was convinced that the idea could be expressed mathematically, in a model very similar to a binary notation that's used in Geiger counters at the time. He proposed that the idea not to promote or showcase any particular technology, but just to entertain fairgoers at the New York's World Fair. That was going to take place in 1939. No, you heard me right, 1939. Design began in earnest with them deciding to use the more reliable electromechanical relays as opposed to the vacuum tubes that were so popular at the time. See, vacuum tubes were faster, but a little flaky and known for burning out at the wrong time. They didn't want to risk the game going down when people were playing it at the fair, so they opted for a little bit slower mechanism. Which really didn't matter, because they were going to build a delay into the unit anyway, so that it would appear to think about the solution rather than just outputting it. This gave the participants an illusion that the computer was actually thinking about possible outcomes rather than just spitting them out. Now, in order to represent the game to the players, they set up four columns of seven lights. The main display on the front was the one that the main player would use, and onlookers could watch from the other three panels, one on each side. That way you could see it regardless of the angle that you were looking at the device from. The player would then pick a column to take lights from and press a button one or more times to indicate the number of lights they wanted to turn off. The computer would then take its turn. If the player won, it would produce a token with the inscription NIM CHAMP. Keep in mind, this was by no means a small device. Popular Mechanics described it as having 116 relays and 2 miles of copper wire. The New York Times described it as a robot 8 feet tall and 3 feet wide, encased in a metal box, and a weight over a metric ton. So you can imagine just how wild this thing looked when it actually debuted at the World's Fair. By all accounts, it was a pretty big success as well, pulling in over 100,000 players, with the machine winning around 90,000 times. It was also perceived just as they intended to be more of an oddity or a diversion rather than a huge technological achievement. Condon went on to record on record as saying, the Nimitron served no other useful purpose but to entertain, unless it was to illustrate how a set of electronic relays can be used to make decisions. He even on, went on to consider it more of a failure, not because it didn't do what he meant it to do, but because he failed to follow up and push the technology any further or do anything else with the concept. What do you guys think of this concept, though? Do you think it's a cool piece of gaming history? 
What do you think they could have done if they'd actually pushed this idea further? Do you think this is ultimately a failure like Condon thought, or a big leap forward in computing? Let me know in the comments. However, that's all that I've got for you today, and thank you so much for spending part of your day with me. If you could, do me one more favor. Hit the like button, and if you hadn't, consider subscribing. It really helps my channel out. But for now, have a wonderful rest of your day, and until next time, happy gaming.